Hey, what's going on everybody? So I wanted to show you a couple of cases where CSMAR, metal artifact reduction, is very helpful to your diagnoses. But before I get into the cases, let me explain how MAR works. So on the CS8200 3D and the CS9600, there's two ways to run MAR. You can either choose to run it at acquisition, where the MAR algorithm is automatically run, or you can choose to run the MAR algorithm retroactively. I'll explain both. So when you elect to run MAR the first way at acquisition, the scan is taken and then the volume is reconstructed once for the original CBCT and then automatically again to apply MAR. Patients only scan once and the volume is reconstructed twice. I would say the main reason for choosing to run MAR automatically at acquisition is simply you know that patient has lots of metal in their mouth. You know the patient, you're going to run the MAR, so you might as well just run it at acquisition. There's a couple of other reasons why you might run it automatically, but the main reason is you just simply know the patient. Now, the second way to run it, like I said, is retroactively, meaning you take your scan like normal, a normal reconstruction is completed, open the scan to see how much the metal artifacts are affecting your scan, then, if you choose, manually run the MAR retroactively. Or, in other words, you're really only running the MAR on a case-by-case -case basis. But either way you run it, of those two ways, you will have the ability to toggle the software back and forth between the normal CBCT and the MAR CBCT, which is very important because you never want to lose the original CBCT. Okay, this first case is a very typical example of what you would see on a regular basis. You see uh, our implant, we see a metal post. You might even have two implants adjacent to each other. And we're seeing all the reconstruction artifacts. We're seeing the beam hardening artifacts, which basically is this void, this black void. So you really just don't know what's lurking behind it. Um, it is masking any type of actual clinical information to help you diagnose accurately. We also see the reconstruction artifacts on our cross-sectional view, and we also see the same thing on our axial slice. We see the reconstruction artifacts, we see the beam hardening. So the same thing. So in this scenario, it doesn't matter if it was run automatically or retroactively, the results are the same. This button over here is my MAR button. I can open this up to view my FDK. FDK stands for Feldkamp. It is just the original CBCT or the normal CBCT algorithm. And then the MAR, of course, is my metal artifact reduction. So let's go ahead and apply the MAR. I'm actually going to toggle it back and forth so you can see the difference. Watch each of the three views as I toggle this back and forth. It makes a huge difference. So a couple of things. So we see our axial slice, all that beam hardening is cleaned up. We can see our panoramic view is much cleaner. We see actual bone loss around the implant, uh, which we did not see before with the beam hardening interfering with our ability to diagnose. We see our cross-sectional views are much, much cleaner. This is a really nice example of how to use MAR and why it's important to understand exactly what's going on clinically. By the way, it's important to note when I toggle back and forth, it's only your MPR views, your slice views that toggle back and forth. You'll notice the 3D rendering does not, and that's by design. The 3D rendering is not supposed to be uh, diagnostic. So the choice was keep it only presenting as MAR. So this is the MAR 3D rendering. Once it gets converted to MAR, it is only presented as MAR. The MPR views are the ones that toggle back and forth. Now, in this case, I wanted to illustrate just how much the 3D rendering is also affected. So even though it's not necessarily used for diagnostic purposes, it's still important. It's important to use for implant planning, if you're adding virtual crowns, for patient education. And when you're looking at a scan like this, it's really not helpful. You really can't do much with this at all. So it's important to understand just how drastic the mark can help you in a case like this. So again, I've separated the two cases, the original CBCT and the MAR CBCT, and this is the original. Now, when we ran the MAR, 
that 3D rendering looks like this now. So it's the same exact case, all right, that the original CBCT was this. We ran the MAR algorithm and the 3D rendering now becomes this. So much, much more helpful. Also, if you do guided surgery and your ability to merge an STL file with the CBCT is gonna be impossible with the way it looked previously. And, but you actually now can actually accurately pick points and merge or have it automatically merge depending on which software you're using. So there's a lot of nice advantages to having it get cleaned up like so. Now the MPR views in a case like this are also a mess. So watch as I toggle back and forth between FTK and MAR. Look at all three views. And I'll point out a couple of things. First of all, in my cross-sectional view down below, you can see all the beam hardening artifacts off of the metal post, all the reconstruction artifacts. When I select MAR, it cleans it up really, really nicely to see what, exactly what's going on in that area. And then also in my axial slice, you can see just how much artifacts that we're seeing. And in this case, I select MAR and it really gets reduced significantly. And actually in this case, it's revealing a fracture, which is really nice. So these are just a couple of examples of using MAR for diagnostic purposes. We'll see you later.